Hello and welcome back to ConsoleTrading.com's videos on Granime 2 version 3, the basics package. Uh, my name is Alex Hughes. Uh, this is the second episode in what I expect to be a five part series, depending on how much content we get through in each section. So we're starting off where we were in the last episode. So if you haven't seen the basics video or I would I would honestly go back and watch the basics. Just maybe flick through it, maybe get to the end, make sure we've covered everything that you understand. Um, but pretty much in the last episode, we added four dimmers. We had colors in them. We added some Robe 700s. We recorded two presets, and we had a position preset. We even had an all preset. Uh, in this episode, we've added some Mac 350s. Just as they are gobo fixtures, uh, sorry, they are color wheel fixtures rather than an RGB, so we can get a good idea of those little dots that I was talking about. Uh, it'll also help me demonstrate going through color wheels a bit better. Uh, a question that I got asked since I recorded the last video how do you make uh, MA output without MA hardware? You can't. That's, that's their. Um, that's their payoff. Nothing. There is no such thing as a free lunch, and the same is in uh, MA World. So today, what we're going to record is we're going to record a large Q stack. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to update. We're going to run effects. We're going to do lots of things. So to do that, we're going to abandon this little screen that we've got here, and we're going to start using Screen Two. Now, Screen Two has a couple of options. Uh, I've got it in Command Wing mode. Uh, and you can change that in the options menu. That's what it looks like normally. And then on screen three, you've got your fader positions. Uh, or on screen four, because it's a. We're basically emulating NMA2 full size. So anyway, we go options. And I'll put the command wing back on because we're only going to use about six sequences anyway. So we're going to click on screen two. Screen two is a nice easy one to use and we're going to create a little bit of a view for ourselves. So we're going to bring across the groups that we used before. I'm going to scale it down by grabbing the little yellow section. Uh, we're going to have position. Uh, we're not going to have that many. We're going to have that many. We're going to have gobo which I'm yet to migrate the the uh, 350s into, which is alright. Uh, we're going to have color, because I'll show you how to do automatic color. And then we're going to have just a little all section. I'll also show you the dynamic uh, preset as well. So we'll, we'll drop in the dynamic one. Pretty much, I'll, I'll cover the dynamic one now, because I don't use it too much, because I use an MA2 light normally and I've got enough screen space for all my pellets but an all pellet, a dynamic pellet just follows the little sections you've got. So if you've got a very small gobo position and you want to see all your gobos you can click on that and it'll just give you all your gobos. So pretty much it changes depending on what you're doing. Color, position, gobo, focus, whatever you need. Uh, but I'm going to replace this in my case with a fixture sheet and I'm going to put it in programmer mode only so you've got a couple of options for your fixture sheet you've also got one for dimmer or channel uh, the buttons across the top are readout natural or percentage and then a bunch of other options we just want natural uh, active only so fixtures that are active even if they're being controlled off playback, so if we go executor 1, we go up with that, and we come back to screen 2, we can see that they're active, uh, or just programmer, and programmer only shows what's in the programmer, fairly simple, simple, uh, I'm not going to use channel because I only got 4 channels. Now something I didn't cover in the previous video that I covered in the first version I did of it, which got lost because the same keystroke for a capital R is also to stop recording, which was a bit annoying. Now I've got a really convoluted keystroke that I couldn't replicate in normal 
trade, hopefully. But creating channel pages in MA1, channel pages used to create themselves. So I imported four and they'd already be four there. You can do it two ways. You can go assign channel one through and if you leave it open for anything, it'll select all of them. So if we go one through and click the first button, there are our four dimmers turning on. And that fourth one is on, it's just really red and annoying. But anyway, we'll click here and we'll drop those photos again. And then we'll come back to our photo pages, which are there. Now we're going to get rid of these two sequences. And we can delete them, you can delete them temporarily by just going Command Overlay Delete. Like so, but you actually haven't deleted them, you've just deleted the references to them. Because if you go to Pools, and click on Sequences, there are our two sequences. So you actually have to physically delete them if you want to, but I don't really want to. So we're going to create pretty much a little bit of a show, and we're going to deal with updating queues and the like. So the first thing we'll do is, we'll imagine that it's some really tacky theatre show, so the first thing we want, I'm not saying all theatre shows are tacky, is we want a bit of a bit of an audience light look. So we just want three dimmers up like so. We're gonna go store and we're gonna use I'm gonna use the bottom here, and this is just gonna become our sequence. Uh and then if we go clear, and we trigger that, we'll see it comes up. Lovely. Easy. Uh, I hate things that aren't named, so we're just going to call this show run. And then we're going to come back. And then the next thing we're going to do is we want 700s to light up the figure, because we're starting the show, we want them to light up. In blue, but we only want the first two to light up in blue. So if we go 703 plus 704, please, and we say them white, we want front white, pretty much white front light on the person, and we're going to dim that down as well, so we don't need it too strong. And then we want the 350s, which I forgot to use my little fixture ID trick. So the 350s, so I'll put them in as 351. Only works if you've got up to nine of them, obviously, but it's still rather handy. And then I can go clear once. So I'm not clearing my programmer. I'm just clearing the selection. And we're going to grab our 350s and go add at. And then we're going to position them together at first. So we're going to go like this, use our align command, go to the middle, slowly pan inwards there, put in a gobo, ah perfect, so the color wheel doesn't work, the color wheel is a snap which is annoying, but I can replicate what I need to with the gobo wheel. So we've done all this, we're going to store to our show sequence and it's going to prompt us and it's going to give us a couple of options. So what do we want to do, do we want to overwrite, which means throw out everything we've programmed on Q1. Do we want to merge? So add it. Do we want a status merge, which is similar to merging? Uh, do we want to remove these fixtures? So do we want to remove these fixtures from the um, sequence? Do we want to release them? Or do we want to create a second queue? In most cases, we're going to create a second queue. Now it's only going to prompt you the first time you create uh, a second queue. From now on, every time we press store and click on it, it's going to do it properly. So we're going to clear our program, make sure that we're sitting in playback, which we are. We're going to go to Q1, and we're going to go to Q2. Now, question I got asked. I'm also going to change around my buttons at the same time. Question I got asked is when we went to Q1, looks fine. But when we went to Q2, the last thing you want in a theatre show is light snapping, changing gobos, doing all that stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rearrange my buttons a bit here. I don't need an on button because my go button turns the sequence on. So I'm going to go and make it a go back button, which is really nice for troubleshooting programming like this. Because I can go one, go back, 
And then rather than killing it, I can just go between them. So, what happens in this queue? We have two things that happen in this queue. Lights move onto the person, and other lights move and drop into Gobo. Now, if we want this to be really smooth, what we can do is we can cheat a bit. Uh, we can use something called the select fix. So if we press select twice and click on our top section, we can see that we've got our fixtures selected. Now if we double click all the parameters we're using, such as dimmer, position, gobo, color, focus, beam, we're double clicking them, it means we're bringing them into the programmer. Red means it's in the programmer. Now I'm going to click store. And I'm going to save it in my all palette. Because then if we kill my sequences like so, we can go into my all palette and recall that sans the gobo, which is interesting. I must not have selected gobo when I recorded that. Which is interesting. That's fine. It happens. So a lot of trial and error. You've always got to check your work. So we're going to go into Q2. Bring it up. I must have missed gobo. Which is fine. So select them. And double click on them. Double click will do the same thing that selecting all of them across the top did. And then we're going to go and double check. Yeah, no, that's in the programmer. Click store. Put it there, click, click, clear, go out, come back here, and there we go. So we've got it in our, in our, in our all palette. Now our all palette's really good for doing what I want to do next, which is in Q1, in Q1 what I want it to do is I want to select all these fixtures, I want them to do that, but I want the dimmer to be at zero. So I want to distinctly tell it, I want them off. And then we click update queue. We go add new contents to show run Q1. Update queue. Click clear, clear twice or three times or you can hold it down. And then when we come into the queue, they're there. Now once again, in a theater show, you don't want things snapping in like that. So if we click instead of on the top where we labeled it and we changed our buttons, we click on our queue list. And while naming queues, we have the option to set a fade, which we can set to three seconds. And we can also change the trigger to be a time. So after three minutes, it'll change a follow on, which means if I press go on the first queue, the second queue will automatically fire. Um, I can delay it or set the out fade of those, or we can do it off a of sound to light. So BPM style stuff and then time code. So in this case, I want to manually do it. I'm also going to name my queues. I'm going to name this pre-show. And I'm going to name this Startup or Scene 1. And then when we go back to pre show, we click the Go button, and in three seconds, those lights fade. That is the basic version of doing a move in black. So we've told the lights exactly what I want them to do. When I recall this first cue list, uh, if we bring up the lights a bit, when I bring up the sequence, we see the lights snap into position and they'll drop their color and do whatever they need to, and then they fade in when they have to. That's a nice way of doing a really smooth fade. Now you can do a move in black with the console, but to be honest, I much prefer programming it manually because I know exactly what's going to happen. I know exactly where my lights are. So we'll, we'll drop this intensity back. You can also do cheap bloom things, which I spoke about before. Feels like just Vaseline on the lens, really. Anyway, so the next thing we've got to tackle is the effects engine. Now, I'm going to get rid of this little sequence thing, and we're going to use effects. So I'm going to create a three-cell effect thing, make it red, because red... And then we're going to import them. Now we can right click, load predefined, bring one in, fall asleep slowly. Or what we can do is 
go setup, import export, import effects, and then just go select all of them and go import. And then when we come back here, we've got all the effects. Now let's have a look at them. So if we if we come out of our programmer for a sec, sorry, if we come out of our playback, we select our 700s, we go add at, we mess with the colors. Not because, just because. And now we can run through our effects. So this is a dimmer sign, a dimmer chase, PVM, dimmer random, dimmer even odd, and then shutter PVM, which is just a shutter. But we can see that because one of these is a shutter effect and one of these is a dimmer, unlike when we selected all these other dimmer effects, they don't stay, the shutter one stays on because they're affecting different parameters. Because you can run lots of different types of effects as long as they don't interfere with each other. Now, first thing we want to do is turn this bloody thing off. So we click off and we select the effect. We click off again and it'll just come back to the way it was. So now we want to come back into playback. And we want to go into our second queue. And our second queue is a storm. So we're now, sorry, our third queue is a storm. So we're going to select our robe 700s. We're going to put them in white. We're going to lose our dimmers. We're going to distinctly tell them to turn off. And we're in tracking mode, by the way. So tracking mode means that anything you don't change from the previous queue stays there. So if you turn tracking off, you have to rebuild every time you do a queue which means you don't run into the issues that some people get where effects keep going but right now today I'm gonna to solve all your problems of effects in sequences not working so anyway we're doing a storm effect so we're also gonna select our 350s, ugh, 350s we're gonna open them which is gonna be that hideous snap which is fine in this case because I know what effect I'm going through and you shouldn't notice it and then we're going to run a dimmer random and we'll see at the bottom that our our things have changed instead of being for a position gobo and stuff we're now controlling the speed and the low and high so if we started it at 15 percent that's actually our intensity so it never drops really to zero and we can see that it's varying its phasing as well so we want a storm like that and then we for the fun of it we also want a pan sign so it's going to move around really slowly, which we're going to set to 15 BPM just because. And it's going to do that. And then we're going to store this queue. So we're going to go command overlay and not update. We want to store Q4, sorry, Q3. And then we're going to go into Q3 and there we have Q3. Ah, and Q3 is running and we're going to do our nice little diligence check. We're going to go from pre-show, just because we've only got three cues, we're going to go into scene one, which is a three second fade. And then we're going to rename Q3 to Storm. Na -na 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 Thunder. Uh, click go. And we can see that those gobos on those 350s snap around. But that's all right. You're not really going to notice they're on the deck. Otherwise, we can put in a quick 0.5 cue, which I'll show you in a second. So we've got our storm, and while we're here, we're going to tackle that annoying, stupid gobo thing that we've got there. So what we can do is, in between scene 2 and scene 3, we want to have an effect that removes those gobos before you see it. So we're going to go into our section. I'm only coming back to this page so I've got access to my... Uh, encoders. So we're going to select our 350s, we're going to tell them off, and we're going to tell them open. Oh, actually, we're going to leave them in Gobo. And then we're going to go store. Oh, we've actually got to check what Q number it is. It's Q2.5. So we're going to look quickly. I have no off the top of my head, but that's fine. We're going to create a Q which pretty much drops these to zero, puts them in place and then brings them back up so we don't see that gobo transition. So in between Q1, sorry, in between 2 and 3, we're going to store Q2.5 
be nice if I could see my command line, wouldn't it? I know that's what it says, but... Store 2.5. 2 and then we're just going to click on which sequence we want it on, which is this one. And it's going to create 2.5. So when we snap into 2.5, nothing happens because we've still got our stuff in our programmer. So we're going to go back. So we've got a nice fade in. We've got our drop to nothing. And then we've still got it in there. Mm. That's because I stupidly didn't remove the effect. Sorry, the, uh, the gobo. So whilst in... Two, we're going to go open, we're going to go update, and we want scene, no we do not want scene two. Why does it think I'm in scene two? Hmm, interesting. We're going to drop into 2.5, which is running, and we're going to go open, we're going to click update, and we're going to go add new contents to 2.5. And now we're going to run it again and see whether I fixed the problem. Two. Off. So the first thing it does is it snaps off with the intensity and then it drops the cue, it drops the uh, gobo for us. Which is great, but I don't really want to have to wait for the, uh, for the storm. I want to go with the storm, so I'm going to call this gobo drop. I'm going to go 350 gobo drop. And I'm going to put in asterisks, um, follow. I'm stealing the asterisks trick off a, uh, another much better LD. And if he watches this video, I'm surprised. But there you go, a little bit of credit to you, uh, RM. RM? No. RN. That's better. Close enough. It'd be embarrassing if I didn't know your name. Alright, so now we're going to go quickly through. We're going to go pre-show. We're going to go scene two where it fades up nicely. And then we're going to click go, and we're going to see that it quickly does that. But it does it way too fast. So we're going to set about one second about fade on scene one. We're going to go back to two. We're going to go three. That still does it. So we need a little longer. They're a bit slow on the uptake, these 350s. We're going to go back. Three. And now we can see that two seconds was enough for it. We might, we might play with this a bit. Just to get it right. So I'm going to come back to scene two. Scene three. And we can see you hardly notice them changing. But there you go. So now we've got a hideous storm running. We've solved the problem of the gobos, but... In Q4, we want it to stop. In come macros. So when we go pools, we want macros. We want to right click. You can do the same import export trick, but I only import the macros I need. And we want one that's called stomp. Stomp. Do, 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 do. Stomp. And it's got a bunch of them. We know that the effect we're running is dimmer. And I think there might be a stop all effects. Ah, oh, yes, stop running effects. So then, if we click this button, it's going to stop them. Yes. And then we're going to save this as a queue. Store, peer, it's going to create queue 4. I'm going to go storm clears. And then, once again, we're going to check quickly that it runs using our lovely handy go button. Why is the thing at the top red? Because we're still editing it. So we're going to go with our full show. Opening. Scene 2. Go with drop. Storm. And then storm stops. And our fixtures return to where they were. Now because we had a pan tilt effect going on, right now the, effect, the fixtures are all over the place. So when we go to the next queue, they naturally have to find where they were before the effect was triggered. Anyway, this was a very quick little uh, segment on effects in mainly theatrical stuff and how to get a nice clean fade. Thank you for watching. My name was Alex Hughes. Be sure to ask us questions and all sorts of wonderful things. And head over to consultraining.com 
and uh, check out the website. We've got lots of lovely videos. We've got a German, we've got an Australian, and that's all you really need for your lighting training needs. Anyway, I've been Alex Hughes. Thank you very much.